Well, yeah. So, but then her her monologue to the detective hurries us along to the next scene, wherein they have apparently like left school to go fool around at her house while her parents are at work. Classic move. I've had I had sex in high school with a woman. <laughs> this is what, how it goes, right? This is a red herring for a thing you're going to. They drove all the way to Canada for this one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> You wouldn't, but then she exploded. Don't don't ask anyone about it from my high school. They're still very sensitive. Nine eleven. She died at nine eleven. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we're stuck in a time loop and Andy McDowell can't help us. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Ned? <laughs> Ned Ryerson? <laughs> no Illusions? And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing. <laughs> are you really, though? Oh, I'm amazing. The existence of this show makes me so goddamn. Yeah, amazing. no, that's true. This so was dumb. This was quite. This was a delight, and not just because it was only 27 minutes long. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? Well, it's only 27 minutes long, so <laughs> I think that's the big takeaway. We watched Vindication episode two. A name and numbers. I love that title so goddamn much. Which they think they think they've connected it. Yeah, it, <laughs> that revelation. <laughs> they have not. I. We'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll get there. It's the story of this is real though. It's the story of what the show thinks is the real victims of revenge porn, the Christian community. Yes, we are yep. not exaggerating. Yep. The sensibilities of the Christian community. Yes, exactly. The real victims. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved the twists and turns of Knives Out, but the characters were all just too darn likable, <laughs> you will love this episode. You will. This episode begins by asking you to sympathize with an abusive boyfriend who gets the crack kicked out of him. And then makes him less likable through its remaining. Time. Like over and over again. Like there are multiple steps down. It's almost impressive in, in its own way. If you told me the test market was supposed to press a button when it was okay to kick this kid's ass, <laughs> the episode makes sense. Now I'm pressing it. I'm pressing <laughs> it. I'm pressing it now. I sat on it when I sat down. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I pressed it again. All right. And of course, this is episode two of the Pure Flix original series, Vindication. We did episode one back on episode 312, but I wasn't here for that one. I've heard of the episode, but I never watched the show. So are there any important elements of the Vindication verse that I need to know about going in? Oh, yeah. Hmm. God, where to begin? So this guy, the cop in the show, mm -hmm. he is a cop. Right. Mm -hmm. He talks to people. Yeah. Good, good deal of talking. And then... um, The end. Okay. The end. All right. Well, yeah, there, that is the end. There that we go. The <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, we should add one more thing. They do like to do a big twist ending. They don't know what that means, but they no. try really hard. Mm -hmm. The twist in episode one, <laughs> it's nonsense. It's the story of the cop interrogating a guy about a murder. But at the very end, we learn that the cop actually solved that murder already before this interrogation started. So the cop was doing a prank murder interrogation yep. of that guy in order to make him Christian. Yep. Wow. Okay. That's the plot. Mm -hmm. All right. And because of that, I was waiting for a similar twist <laughs> throughout this episode. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was like, the whole time I was like, the cop kicked the shit out of that kid. Right? I know how this is going to go. <laughs> and that's how he found Jesus. Yeah, right. Right. Exactly. Right. Kicked his ass till he found Jesus. Okay, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best of being the worst half? Best worst sandwich space work. <laughs> yep. There's, oh my God. You son of a bitch. Greatest. How dare you take that one? <laughs> There's a scene that starts with the main character and she's sad and sitting down in the hallway at her high school and she's got to be all mopey and <laughs> they gave her a sandwich in a baggie as a prop. And she had that like terrifying five seconds where she had to do space work at the beginning of the shot. And she just looks down at the sandwich 
and kind of panics because the scene still hasn't started. It's been three seconds. She doesn't mm-hmm. know what to do. So she goes goes and grabs the sandwich and she's like, okay, is my sandwich... What do I do? Uh, is it upside down? No. <laughs> <laughs> puts it back down the same way. Yep. Oh, Can we start the scene? And then the scene starts. It's like, yep. she's, it's like she's checking her cards in Texas Hold'em with the sandwich. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> some of the best Christian space work we have ever seen. The only way that scene makes sense is if someone has just slid a financial offer to her <laughs> in the form of that sandwich across the table. <laughs> and she's like, Still sandwich. Okay. <laughs> what about same? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, honestly, I think we all would have gone with some form of best worst sandwich if Heath hadn't already taken it. But I'm going to go with best worst forgiveness, both the means of the forgiveness and the fact that it was there to begin with. Fuck this asshole. It's yeah nonsense. Fuck this asshole. And I was going to go with best worst red herring. So, if we've learned anything about vindication <laughs> as the show, I think, sorry, I think the red herring is that they don't know what twist means. Yes. Yeah. 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 He touched on it, which is that if vindication has a theme, and I do hate to use that word, it's that you don't know who did the crime, but that's because they're stupid. Right. The, the, the right. twist to this show is that the people who wrote it are idiots. Yep. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we will get several of those insane red herrings throughout this show. The whole thing is like, or is it? And it's like, I don't, that doesn't even make sense right now as a question. The movie's trying to say, or is it? Yeah. Spoiler alert. It'll turn out that nothing that happens in the show is related to the crime. No. For the second episode in a <laughs> row. This is lost no, level. It's unrelated. <laughs> and they do terrifying, really problematic things that they don't have to do. Right. And they that just do it. No sense. They have nothing to do with the plot. Yes. All right, well, I'll tell you what, this episode is only 27 minutes long, and it really pads its script to get there. So we're going to take a minute to do the same, but we'll be back in a flash with all the inconsequential distractions that are Vindication Episode 2. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Okay, and you'll promise you give it back. For the last time, yes, I will give your brain back. Hey, guys, what's with all the weird science stuff? Oh, uh, Heath and I are switching brains. Mm-hmm. You're switching brains. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, New Year. I've been feeling a little bummed lately. And I was just thinking, man, you know, I want to be inside Heath's brain for a little while. It seems nice in there. Yeah, it's true. It is. It is nice in here. See? It's well, nice in there. Eli, if something's interfering with your mental health or happiness, why don't you just try better help? Oh, what's better help? Better, See, the machine's okay. working already. Okay. Which is how we're doing it. We, we, we talk a lot about better help on this show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. Oh, we are? We are. For example, some people think you should wait until things are unbearable to go to therapy, but that isn't true. Therapy's a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you avoid those lows or keep you from stealing Heath's brain. Wait, wait stealing? It says are you, the are you stealing? brain stealatron 3000 on the side of the machine. That is Swedish. Okay. BetterHelp, you say. What's better? Yeah, well, so BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. All right. Well, Keith, I guess you get to keep your brain. Hmm. Hey, why didn't you try to steal my brain? Oh, um, you know, it was the you were you yell at inanimate objects a lot. Well, you know what? Lots of inanimate objects are stupid. Sure. Yep. And deserve it. Yep. Okay. What's it Swedish for? What it says on the cover. And so I said, I'm not speeding because I have my guardian angel with me. So, Oh, and, and, and what did he say? He said, you're naked on a carousel, sir. Okay, but that's that's fair. Mm. Hi. Sorry. Um, Is this the writer's room? Oh, hey, you must be the new guy, Rick. Yeah. Really excited to be working on this Pure Flix crime drama with you guys. Yeah, yeah, us too. Hey, question for you. Would you say it's possible to speed on a carousel? No, no you, you know what? Not right now, man. So, so tell us, Rick, wh- what kind of episodes did you have in mind for the show? Okay, so you know how revenge porn is actually a really huge problem in the United States and it rarely gets prosecuted? Sure. Yeah, yeah it's terrible. 
So what if we did an episode about that? I mean, we have a Christian audience and I think we could really communicate the like long term consequences of that kind of sexual violence. Yeah, um, you yeah, know, hmm. and, and we could add like a mystery, right? Like who beat up the guy who did it? Oh, uh, sorry. I, I, I don't want to say no right away, but I actually feel like that, that might take away from the point, right? It, it would make the criminal the victim. Well, well, well he is the victim though of the punches. Right. He would get punished. No, he, yeah. I, I understand victim. it. It's L- just, look, that, I, look, I, I think we've got what we need here. We're very excited to have you working with us, Rick. Yeah. I, I guess, I guess so. We'll figure it out. Okay. So carousels. Dude, they arrested you because you were naked. W- well, okay, now you've spoiled the story, and I think he's biased, so I, I can't even ask I him I don't think that I did. Okay. So carousels. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up at a hospital, desperately trying to convince us that it's just a normal hospital. They're just <laughs> hospitals. <laughs> It's as though the camera operator is going, surely one of you can properly pantomime hospital and each person <laughs> is worse. It's so bad. One guy's on the phone and he's like, hello, fellow <laughs> phone caller. I'm at the hospital <laughs> now is where I'm telling you about it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hospital. You Hospital. Yep. I wrote in my notes, it's like this movie's a bad liar and just got the sense that we think it's lying. You know, no, no, no. Look over here. This guy also is saying hospital words over here. This woman has a desk lamp. They only have those at <laughs> hospitals. Beep. Shit. Beep. Oh, that- geez, you could tell that I'm saying those beeps. Beep. No, I wouldn't be dying. That doesn't make sense. Are you holding the chart in front of your face so I don't see you making the beep noise? You're holding the chart in front of your face so I don't see you make the beep noise. So, yeah, so into this very hospitally hospital walks Detective Travis, who is ostensibly the star of this show. But this show is really delivered in vignettes. So there's no like, you know, there's there's no story behind Detective Travis. He's just generic detective. Yeah. And we should point out two episodes in, we have learned truly nothing about this man that isn't his physical appearance. Well, so we learn one fascinating thing about this guy in the next scene, but we'll get to it. Sure. Ooh. We only humanize him once and in a really weird fucking way. I'm so excited to find out something fascinating about him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We did find out what that means. You have a lot of notes on it. So <laughs> so he comes in and he's he's talking to Mr. and Mrs. Bannon. He says, your son has been beaten unconscious and we don't know who the attacker. Sorry, somebody had to say it. Um, You guys weren't <laughs> expositioning yet. Look, this is we have 27 minutes to get through this. We don't have all fucking day. Yeah, he's making the parents of a kid. A kid got beat up and we're talking to the parents, the cops talking to the parents. He's he's asking them about like medical details. Obviously, it's because they have to exposit here, but it makes no sense. He's just like, yeah, so I. I'm a cop. I talked to the doctors about how horrible your son's doing. I would like you to say it out loud because I wasn't <laughs> on camera when that happened. Have you seen what happens when we try to doctor word? It isn't pretty. We're not gonna. <laughs> we're not gonna show you that scene. Is there an opposite of exposition? Insposition that he does here. <laughs> I also love. He's like, so uh, when he came home last night, did you notice anything out of the ordinary? And mom's answer is probably all the beat to shit he was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He he was lying on the ground bleeding and moaning. I guess that's not ordinary for him. He doesn't usually do that when he gets home from work. <laughs> yeah. Also, this show is trying to do their twist already. They're, so what they do is they want to reveal who the bad guy is, but not yet. So they're trying to make everybody seem suspicious, but it makes no sense. So everybody's way over the top, crazy suspect. The cops asking him just about general stuff. It's like, okay, so you uh, you found your son in the driveway. And the wife looks at the husband, looks like back, uh, sweats for 15 seconds. And then she's like, yes, driveway. And the cop's like, did you just confer with your husband about finding him in the driveway? To check in with him about whether yes. or not you found him in the house. <laughs> you did. And then they they pan over to the daughter for a second. And the daughter is like so clearly aware of some suspicious thing. And the cop's like, you're going to. You going to meet my island? No. Yeah, we'll get to that later. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. What's great is the daughter's not a good actress, so it just seems like she's embarrassed to be in the movie. Like, she saw them do that acting, and she was like, yikes. Was Ugh. that supposed to be subtle? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I really hope this is my Leonardo DiCaprio bubblegum commercial and not, like, the extent of it. <laughs> Fuck. Also, 
the detective asks here, did he do anything recently to get his ass kicked? And they say no, but we will spend the rest of the episode being like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So, and then, and he asked, this is how he phrases that question. This is one of the most bizarre things I've ever had to transcribe from one of our fucking movies. He says, quote, how about the family? Anything going on with the family or outside the family? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes it would, it would have things to. are going on both in and out of the fucking family man at least one of those yeah do you guys uh it's a yes dude. do you guys know if the time dimension's moving forward <laughs> even if it was moving backwards it would yes. Be yes. <laughs> things would be happening that's true jesus that's true but they answer girlfriend he broke up with his girlfriend right yeah uh -huh. yeah right he's just like so you guys watch law and order right um who Oh, who would you say I'm talking to in the next scene? Is it like <laughs> right, ex-girlfriend right. or mom's like he broke up with design. maybe that's the plot? I don't fucking know, man. Yeah. It's law and order, but there's not the famous guest star to tell you who did it. Right. <laughs> and so we have to get we have to hear from dad before it's all over, right? So the, the detective says <laughs> anything from you, Dad? And he says, Get him. Get him. find him. <laughs> and I'm like, that's just that's his whole thing, man. That's his, jo his job. He's doing that now. <laughs> get her done. What? I'm sorry. Did you say get her done? <laughs> Honestly, right now, every character we just met did whatever crime happened. Yes. Yeah. Like they all this right now, this family murdered their son. Right. Together. Right. And we're going to find out that that's the fucking case eventually. Spoiler. It's going to set up a twist. <laughs> so then we get the title. And it's, you know, it comes up says vindication. Then it says a name and numbers, which I, I only can assume is like was somebody's description of the script, right? Like they, they were like, <laughs> oh, we didn't name this episode. It's got a name and some numbers on it. Fuck. Uh, uh, a name and numbers is going to pay off in the best possible <laughs> fucking way. Yeah. In a way that genuinely haunts me. I have stopped, stopped whatever it is I was doing in the days since I watched this episode to be like, why did the it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay, partial spoiler. It's a Bible thing, but it's not about the book of Numbers. No, nope. <laughs> they're so stupid they didn't even work that in. Nope. Or a name. Yeah, not, neither of those two things. No, look. Discuss. This was almost my best worst, but we, we'll get there. We'll get there. So the detective pulls up at a house. Now, there's going to be a very quick little scene here where he's sitting in his car getting ready to walk into the house. <laughs> It's one of so the good. weirdest things that has ever <laughs> happened to me. So, first of all, we have to point out that he's got, because this is going to be important. He's got this envelope that says recovered mobile device photos, pin in that. But then he notices some kind of schmutz on the dashboard of his car. And he, he fights it for an hour and a half like the fucking host. <laughs> Venom let there be carnage. <laughs> do, do we know what that was supposed to be? He he is solving a mystery for most of the show on his dashboard. He's slapping at it. He's yelling at it. He's trying to figure it out. And like, okay, it's just like schmutz on the dashboard, but if you came on your dashboard, you know what that is. It's not a mystery right. to you. And he's like, all right, should I lick it? And I was like, don't lick it, man. Don't lick it. <laughs> Whatever it is, don't lick it. And he's licking it. He licks it. We all had in our notes some form of, oh, don't lick your hand after you touched it. It's so <laughs> the feeling is so overdrawn. The only way I could describe it is there was this weird moment in 80s movies where there was like, a small thing that bothered the main character, like Steve Martin would see a fly or John Belushi would find a mouse. Right. And then we would spend an hour with them. It's that, but it's spot on his head. He's karate fighting spot on his dashboard <laughs> for an eternity. One twentieth of this episode is him trying to get this shit he off his head. He puts it in a dashboard. beaker. He swishes it around for a while. It's nuts and and i know what you're thinking listener you're thinking it oh okay they've got a 27 minute episode they have to make a big deal no this i don't give a shit if this thing was three hours long we would have had to stop and marvel at the weirdness of this fucking scene oh the first cut of this was three hours long until they had to bring this down to whatever it came out as <laughs> to in the, the scene to the manageable 90 seconds there. <laughs> Also, while this is happening, while he's going nuts, just beating the shit out of his dashboard, 
<laughs> the radio in the background actually is saying, so we, uh, we have a new study and it says stressful jobs like being a police officer, for example, make you, you know, angrily lick your own cum if you don't laugh. <laughs> like it, it almost says, it doesn't say cum, but like it almost says that. And he's like, oh, okay, topical. I guess I should relax. <laughs> I'll figure this out later. And then he goes inside. We also learned that he has passengers can fuck themselves floorboards, right? He just throws this guy, like he finishes his coffee and just throws the cop in this floorboard full of junk. Yep. He has the same approach to car cleanliness that my wife and I do. Now, there you go. Got to admire it. I had one of those for, I had the garbage ottoman for a long time. Yeah. For like the first five years of my car career. It was bad. I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just explaining. So yeah. So he, he goes inside. It's comfortable. To see the ex-girlfriend, Courtney. Now she is a quote, teenager, unquote. The, the actress. <laughs> look, she's 25 years old and not in a young way, right? No. Now, we've seen her before. This actress also played the Columbine victim that had the journal in I'm Not Ashamed. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah, I remember all of that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I pay attention. Yep. But yeah, so he, but he comes in to talk to her. She's there with her mom and he's like, so... You know, do you know who beat the fuck out of your ex? Was it you? Because it, um, do you you know things that are important yeah she asks is he in trouble and the cop has to be like forgetting his ass kick yeah right right i don't understand the question no. <laughs> yeah. but before they even start talking this is so offensive the cop is like okay we could talk now but um do, do you want to like wait for your your male owner to be here because your dad's not here and they have to like think about that I mean, your boyfriend's all beat up he can't own you right now and she's like yeah no I'll, t I'll talk now this is cool oh just one other thing about this scene and uh, this is a small thing but it really but this is very important actually this is very important to me so you know um you know that you got the couch in your living room and then you got uh, a coffee table in front of it generally right mm -hmm. they have one of those like ottomans that's also a table in the thing that's not a table Get a real, I don't like that at all. Get a real <laughs> table. You have to have a flat cert. It can't have like leather with button pushy holes that are not flat. It's you can't crazy. balance a glass on. It's yeah. nuts. And then they, you, they have that little miniature that wood thing to like create a table out of a not table. Just have a table. Based on the schmutz smearing scene, I'm surprised that we didn't get like a 90 second him trying to balance a glass on the bottom <laughs> in the scene. <laughs> Fuck. Ah, God. Is, do I just put it on the ground like an animal? Is that what I do in my train? <laughs> okay, no, no. I'll just put no, it I'll just hold near this. my feet like a weird orphan. No, it's cool. I'll just keep it between my feet like it's a tiny mouse I've befriended <laughs> in an animated film. So <laughs> cool. Everybody, I hate get tables. I hate that. So, yeah, so, but she's like, uh, yeah, so let me tell you the entire backstory. It's going to be most of the episode, actually. So we flash back to the story of her and Justin. She's Courtney. He's Justin. And they're hanging out for a wild night of go fish at her parents' place. God, it's so fucking good. It's so good. Because they're supposed to do, it is, okay, my only explanation for the scripting of this scene is that she improvised your cheating and the actor was like, no, I'm not cheating. <laughs> He's got a very Heath playing a card game with his new girlfriend kind of attitude about this whole go fish game, doesn't he? He was, he was winning. It's not, if somebody <laughs> shows their hand a little bit and you look, that's not cheating. That's your <laughs> win. Like, that's their fault. Everybody knows that's part of poker is you check, you look, maybe they, they show that they flashed their hand by accident. But I think what happened is she's like, you're cheating. And he was, in fact, cheating on her with another girl. <laughs> He's like, you're cheating at, at Go Fish. Yep. We're talking. About oh, fish. there you go. Okay. All right. I think that was the dynamic there. And of course, we see that her hovering mom is hovering. Like, she might as well literally be hovering over her, right? But right. <laughs> and to be clear, this movie's point is, should have hovered longer and harder. Yep. You're right. You're right. You didn't hover quite enough. Now, did you, mom? Yeah, because immediately after mom leaves, dad comes in and he's like, all right, that's enough. Go fish. That's enough. Go fish. You might as well be balls deep inside her. Which is just, <laughs> Jesus. Got any threes? Not until you're married. You will find out if she has threes when you are married, <laughs> sir. Also, I feel like the mom went the hovering moment. They didn't script it for her. So she just had to make something up on the fly. So she just, they, they pan over to her and she's like, I found my spare 
Blanket. There it is. Yeah, there's my blanket. She pantomimed a fake thing for the first two takes. She was like, just getting my steering wheel. Stop, Karen. <laughs> Karen, just pick up anything that in the room and say what it is. <laughs> there's not. Is there a steering wheel in front of you you're, in the closet? You're mopping, Karen. <laughs> Don't mop gesture. Are you stuck in a box now? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Why are you stuck in a box? You're jerking off a bunch of guys. It's invisible. Is that what it is? <laughs> How, it, oh, it's four. Three syllables. It's four. Okay, three syllables. <laughs> you're doing feet. All right, okay. movie. Don't look up. No, but she she lands on blanket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just like I lit my blanket on fire by accident. Now I, I need, need another blanket two, now. One. Yeah. But yeah, then but then Dad comes in. And he's like, uh, this scene is pretty much over though. We've done everything. We know she's the hovery mom. I'm the hovery dad. You're the boyfriend. She's the girl. Like, what else is there to set up? Yeah. Right. I do like though a pure flex actor trying to do protective dad because he just comes off as a psychopath seething with rage. Right. Like it's very clearly them, the pure flicks writers and a pure flicks actor trying to do like, I'm not so sure about that boy, you know, patriarchy bullshit. But he's just like the fuck out of my house. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Out of my (laughs) like if there is a missed scene where he had upper deckered their bedroom toilet, (laughs) this dad's (laughs) performance is on par. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what, I don't know about you two, but. That dad gave me dating in high school flashbacks on I need a minute to breathe into a paper bag or something. So we're going to take ourselves a quick break, but we'll be back in a flash with even more Vindication Episode 2. Gave me wedding flashbacks. (laughs) Hi, welcome to Big Grocery Mart, where you can actively watch me be replaced by a self-checkout robot. How can I ignore you today? Right, yeah. So I was hoping to do some more cooking at home, so I came here to get ingredients you guys are missing like a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's the supply chain, man. You're out of mushrooms because of the supply chain? Mm-hmm, yep, mm. totally, supply chain. But hey, if you want home-cooked meals made with fresh ingredients, you should try HelloFresh. Oh, what's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. That does sound good, but I wasn't looking to spend all day in the kitchen, you know? I get it. HelloFresh cuts back on the time spent in the kitchen so you can spend it on your other resolutions with meals ready in around 30 minutes or less. Plus, quick and easy meals includes 20-minute recipes and low prep and easy cleanup options, providing an even faster route to putting food on the table. Okay, but that sounds super expensive, right? Actually, according to the Dining Zagat survey, HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality. And you can save, on average, over 65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. Wow. But am I going to be eating the same meal over and over? Sounds repetitive. No way. HelloFresh offers 50 meal and market items to choose from every single week, including veggie, calorie smart, family friendly, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Recipes like hibachi sweet soy, bavette steak and shrimp bring restaurant quality meals right to your kitchen, while their white cheddar Wonder Burgers make it easier than ever to skip the takeout. All right, grocery store guy. I'm sold. Where do I sign up? No, you just go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. So you're saying I go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use the code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts? That's right. All right, thanks. Hey, also, um, quick thing. The entire time we've been talking... That guy over there, he's been waving at you because the self-checkout robot needs you to punch in your code thing for no reason at all. Oh, yeah. No, I saw him. Okay. Um, so you going to go over there or? Uh, eventually. Um, eventually. Okay. Supply chain. <laughs> Hi, I'm No Illusions. And I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, there's an awful lot of high school relationship drama in TV and movies these days. Heck, if you're a parent, you might even hear some of it in person. Which is why we're pleased to present Heath Tracks. That's right. Using our irresponsible time machine and our very own Heath Enright, we can ensure that any high school drama you're watching is accompanied by Heath's commentary. So you can turn this... Michelle, are we dating or not? I don't know, Brad. I just don't know. To this... Michelle, are we dating or not? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I don't cares. know, Brad. I just don't know. You're both the worst. Both of you suck. Heath tracks because nobody cares about high school bullshit, but nobody cares less than Heath. Boo. Boo. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. When we last left off, nothing had happened. Get used to that. And we're going to rejoin <laughs> the inaction, I guess, with Courtney walking Justin to his car after that arousing game of Go Fish that they just played. Mm-hmm. And this is where they do the, are we going to fuck, but they're not allowed to say fuck conversation. Yeah. This is pure flex. <laughs> they, they say it. They yep. actually use it. <laughs> have you have you decided on it? And she says, what? And he's like, come on, you know, it's pure flex. I can't. He says, so he goes, the thing that we were texting about. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that the Dove channel won't get mad about us talking about now. <laughs> The Dove Channel did, by the way. If you look at the ratings for this episode, the Dove Channel is like, makes <laughs> reference to <laughs> nakedness. Yep. To doing it. <laughs> it, you know. It's just, at it's, this point, I wrote in my notes, it seems like they could be talking about fucking or a heist. <laughs> 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 and it's so good because this scene, which matters not at all, literally has a Heath yells at the Bible Peace Theater moment with dad in the background be like, oh, oh, oh it seems oh, like you should the get best. the fuck out of here. This is oh, the fuck off. best. Yeah. You know, they're saying goodbye and like, you know, are they going to kiss? They're talking about it. Is that kiss? So dad's like out on the stoop, theoretically. And, and he's just like, <clears throat> I'll murder you. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. It made, made me laugh a lot. Actually. Cough, get out <laughs> away from my house. I hate yeah. you. Cough. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> and the kids being an, he's the worst. I like he's the worst. From moment 1 including this, I'm glad he got beat up. Like super glad. Yep. At this moment he's like selling it like he's in like a timeshare salesman of fucking. So he's just like, "All right, 17-year-old girl, you need to act now while supplies last." My dick. Right. The worst. <laughs> yeah. And dad's like, murder you right now. <clears throat> murder you. I'll murder you. <clears throat> I said, I'll murder you. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I will be murdering you. So, yeah. So he leaves. She goes inside and they really try to sell me on the fact that she goes inside to masturbate. Right. She's like, oh, almost got that kiss. I'm going to have to rub one out now. 100%. She's in a towel in the bathroom, locks the door, lights a candle. And I'm like, no, I get it. I get it. He's like, his chin it. was a little weird, but Justin's hot. Sure. Sure. You think about Timothy Chalamet. I kind of get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I was thinking so Eddie Redmayne. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, this is her sending him. Oh, <gasps> no. Yes. And my favorite part about this is. Pure flicks. I don't know what in I, Vincent D'Onofrio. They hired Vincent D'Onofrio to come down and be like, if that towel moves even an inch, we will kill you and your whole family. <laughs> so because she's wrapped in this fucking down comforter of a towel, which cannot move below the shoulder line. Well, less, so yeah, and, and cannot show more than one inch of cleavage, right? Right. So the, <laughs> she's got it pulled up to her neck like a damn turtleneck. There's an intricate system of trusses just <laughs> off <laughs> camera, but really on camera. But because of this, the way to show that she's doing something sexy is that she gets her hair all hoary. Yes. <laughs> <and> the scandal is <laughs> nude. She's going to send him. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So she sends him nudes. And then we cut to her telling this story to the detective. Mom is very disappointed. But like we pan from the end of that monologue down to that envelope that he had earlier that had the nine inch letters about recovered cell phone photographs. <gasps> yeah. So to be clear, mm -hmm. she's guilty of sexting. This was her villain turn, according to the show. Yep. Yeah. Fuck you. Right. So, and also, like, so he brought them in. Yeah. He's got them in a sealed envelope, but like, I'm like, is, is he trying to, does he want to get them autographed? Is <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be clear, though, this police officer is holding an envelope of very literal child porn. Yep. Am I wrong? Yeah. Right. No, so it's slightly before the barely legal. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> It's while he talks to the child in the porn. Right. Yeah. Th somebody printed those out. That happened. Yeah. Well, and so I, I wrote my notes at this point. I was like, what I love is that though this movie will make this relevant in real life, the fact that she sent nude pics to her boyfriend before this would be entirely irrelevant. And she'd just be telling the cop this for no reason. I was overestimating the movie you at were. that yes, point. You were. Right? It I, is, in fact, irrelevant. <laughs> it's entirely irrelevant. <laughs> they just do that anyway because they don't know what twist means and they're insane. <laughs> yep. 
but yes, literal child porn is in this movie for no. I wanted like Mariska Hargaday to come in and just arrest the cop credits. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a great show. There you go. But we also learn here through the dialogue between her and the cop that at some point he passed those photos around to his buddies and her pictures got spread all over school. A sex crime. Yeah. Right. Well, really, she started it, though, is what they're saying. Yeah. The movie doesn't know that it's a sex crime. They think it's like a kind of mean prank. <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 this is the first and not last time I wrote in my notes. Okay, I'm starting to suspect that maybe I beat this kid up. <laughs> yes, I wrote that in my notes, too. I, I have I did this multiple times. <laughs> Honestly, if this show wanted to win me over... In this scene, if he had just been like, oh, he spread your news around, I don't care then who beat him up. None of, this, <laughs> none of my business. I have a tube to step on at the hospital. I'll be back. <laughs> kind of worked itself out in payroll. I yeah, guess. I feel like this is a <laughs> good thing. Unfortunately, they don't let me give away medals. So um, <laughs> you did it or maybe you didn't. Who gives a shit? Bye. Right. Yeah. Yep. Here's your nudes. I printed them out at CVS. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ow. Get off me, Mariska Hart. Get off me. <laughs> Ow. I want Maloney. <laughs> but we also learn at this point that even after he revenge porned her, they were an on again, off on again couple. Yeah. Yep. Like they remained an item. What? On again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, kids, kids, come on over here. It's me, your best friend, Eli Bosnick. This week's episode has 22 minutes of content. So let me pull you aside for a quick PSA. If you're an We're on again, a P Eli PSA about uh, the sex lives. You got to do your kids? thing about the Ottoman. I'm doing okay. mine. You did an Ottoman. <laughs> no, those, those are, those are you equal. Did an Ottoman. This is mine. That's a tie. Equal. Mine now. Yep. It's my turn. I mean, come on, Heath, you talking about other people's furniture is every bit as meaningful as Eli talking about other people's relationships. The, the sex lives of high school kids. Yep. Exactly. It's our levels of expertise. Fine. If Noah just keeps segueing away from whatever you're trying to do, <laughs> this is my favorite episode. Never. Ever. Kids, listen up. <laughs> listen to me. I'm I'm the cool one. I'm sitting backwards on my recording chair right now, which is very difficult, but I'm doing it for you. <laughs> it's a Herman Miller. It's got arms. <laughs> He's got, got arms. Arms. Like I am there. I'm in a sex swing right now, essentially, <laughs> so that I can relate to you. And I'm not a flexible man. I'm a big boy. I'm in I'm very hurt. You're gonna hear a silence. That's a 48 minute cut while my wife pushes me off this chair and takes me to the hospital. Listen up. If you're part of an on again, off again couple, just be off. Yep. Just stop. Just be off again forever. It never works out well. Sometimes like the, you, you'll end up getting married. It's still, it's bad. It's no matter how long the relationship lasts, it's, it's going to be bad. It's a bad. It's going to be bad relationship. <laughs> so, yeah. So and, and get a real fucking table. Also, what, one other thing about these actors. Mm -hmm. So this scene is insane, but all the actors are stupid people who think it's like a real important emotional scene that makes sense right yeah so they're acting so fucking hard they're all like there's like slow pauses and face shots and reaction shots to the nothing nonsense like honestly they're acting so hard i felt stoned like you know when you <laughs> you get too stoned and you watch anything and you're like they're acting <laughs> yeah it was like i felt like that i <laughs> <laughs> yeah very much so I, I also love like the moral underpinning of this entire scene, which is, yeah, you might think you're just sending a picture of boobs to him. But what if he shares it all to his friends and then it becomes evidence in some police investigation and they towed an envelope around where some gross old guy has seen your tits? I mean, just come on, give me a fucking I wanted like her fucking naked pictures to somehow knock the earth out of its orbit or something. <laughs> Fuck yeah. the tides up by the end of it. I wanted her to address it, at least be like, OK. So you have that envelope. Why did you bring it in? What, what were you going to do? <laughs> Why do you have it in here now? What oh, were you going to show them to me? I oh, know. It's like are. a little flip book. I had a, I made a flip book. I wanted to. <laughs> Don't. So, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> See, if you do it this way, you just take a candle out of yourself and yeah. put it on the table. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so the detective prompts her with a paraphrase of, so what's the next scene? Yeah. And then we cut to Justin and Courtney hanging out at school during their makeup breakup phase. Now, there is a, this is uh, the, I, I think the director thought he was nailing it with this. There is a doorway that the two of them sit in together at school, not on chairs, <laughs> but just no. on this, the floor. This school was like, you can have 
this doorway. Can we get a chair? No. <laughs> No, you can't. Nine inches on either side of this doorway. <laughs> I love the beginning of this scene. She hands him a note and he looks at it and he goes, you know, you could have just texted me. And I really <laughs> wanted it to be like a crude hand drawn picture of boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's not the same if you draw it. He's just like, all right, this, this is an email, right? You could just, <laughs> this could be an email. Do I, do I keep this? Oh, it's boobs. I will keep this. No, all right. Okay. okay. So and I, I love that my overacting note came so quickly after Heath's right. I, I was like, at this point, his douchey boyfriend might as well be doing the Alma gaw every sentence, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this is where we get the jealousy, right? Oh yeah, yeah. He talks to another girl about class, which she reacts to like he fucks her in the ass in the middle <laughs> of the hallway. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's exactly like the meme, too. They are even standing in the same angles and everything. Mm -hmm. He's looking back. Yeah, but it's nothing. Some girl walks by and he's just like, oh, hey, uh, Karen, um, do we have homework for science today? And she's like, whore. You're a whore, Karen. Yep. And then they argue about that for a while. Yeah. yeah. Well, but she says, well, oh, it's OK for you to do that. But whenever I talk to a guy about anything, you freak out. And then I wrote again. I'm really starting to think I'm the chief suspect, guys. Lie for me. I, we need a, an alibi of some sort. I was with Noah the whole time. Again, my notes here are, I would beat the crap out of this kid. I did it. It's the <laughs> ultimate twist. God. And this is like the basis of this terrifying high school relationship, too. Yeah. This is where they're like, okay, well, I, I think the rule should be, we should both not be allowed to speak with any other human beings during our relationship from now on. That should be the rule. Right. And he's like, well, it, no, it, it needs to be a double standard just for me. Like, you, you, know, you don't know how guys think. I know how guys think. So anyway, let's have um bad sex today or else I hate you. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's guys right. He goes straight from you don't know how the guys think to please touch my penis, please. <laughs> yeah. Call in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get the dick. It's you can't afford not to fuck me. <laughs> well, yeah. So but then her, her monologue to the detective hurries us along to the next scene wherein they have apparently like left school to go fool around at her house while her parents are at work or at least while he thinks her parents are at work. Classic move. I've had I had sex in high school with a woman. <laughs> this is what, how it goes, right? This is a red herring for a thing you're going to They drove all the way to Canada for this one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you wouldn't, but then she exploded. Don't, don't ask anyone about it from my high school. They're still very sensitive. 9 <laughs> 11. She died at 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> but then they get to the house and she's like, be quiet. My dad's at home. He's asleep. He works third shift. And he's like, so we're supposed to just fuck quiet? <laughs> And she's like, well, yeah. And, and 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 he's not like, okay, yeah, sure. We'll fuck quiet. I feel like you would just fuck quiet. But mom is also there. So they're busted. Yeah, they do such a bad job when they're busted. She's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, I was here to sex. This, I, I needed this blanket. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have it. I lit my school blanket on fire <laughs> like you did earlier with your home blanket. That's why we have these. People need blankets. Yeah. So, so yeah. And then Courtney monologues us to later in the relationship. And, and you know, their, their relationship has gotten rocky at this point. They're always angry and fighting. And the way they represent this is that now some guy stops to ask her about schoolwork and he gets mad about it. Yeah. But, like... <laughs> Unlike the, his scene where he's like, hey, Karen, am I going to see you in art class later? This guy's like, achoo. And she's like, bless you. And he's like, seriously, right in front of me? Why don't you just come into my mouth? <laughs> okay, but it wasn't right. He he wasn't on camera at that moment. No. So she says half a sentence to some guy. And then he like repels down on a rope out of nowhere. And he's like, what the fuck was that? The instant he's out of frame, Justin shows up and grabs her. It's like the blocking in a fucking musical, right? Like they were trying to represent <laughs> this during the song or something. Yeah. It was hilarious. But yeah, but so they break up and I write in my notes, Jesus, high school relationship drama is my go-to example of the most boring possible thing. Like this is the second half of the is like example of something impossible to give a fuck about. And that's the whole show. That is the show. 
You like you got a story about your kid at all? Did you want to share a quick kid story with us? <laughs> <laughs> you, where did you go on vacation? I, I so I wrote also. I love the universe where none of this is relevant to the assault, and the detective is just trying to hurry things along without being impolite. And then later, me came back and wrote, "This movie is that universe." Yep. <laughs> It cuts over to the detective, like, closing his notebook and being like, uh, you know, that's not bad. But I really wanted to uh, flash cut of the notebook. And it's just like high school bullshit. High school bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm writing this down. Yeah. And then he talked to Cindy at homeroom. Oh, that's oh, very really? important that, for my oh. police investigation. <laughs> Are we going to go over these naked pictures that you are not? Right, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And this is where like she realizes what's in the envelope and, and, and they have the conversation. He also points out, he's like, hey, you know, not all abuse is physical. Right. Sometimes it's just carrying around your naked pictures and letting you know about it. Right. Yeah. Right. Or sometimes it's a cop who has naked pictures of you that he printed out at his police station <laughs> or maybe CVS. <laughs> I'm not sure. And he keeps asking you for details about those pictures. It's one. It's yeah, something like right. that. Yeah, exactly. And literally, so I wrote that as a joke. The very next line from the cop is like, "Okay, so tell me some details about the photos." Yeah, what were yeah. you thinking about in this one? <laughs> <laughs> and she has the weirdest take here. The weirdest pure flicks take. Her take is, you know, I think having a sex crime committed against me by a psychopath was good for me at the end because. Now I feel guilty about ever having sexual desires or needs as a 17-year-old. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I'm broken the way I should be. I'm really making it difficult for my Christian community around me. I've really victimized my community. Oh, God. If you think about so it. This is really awful. hard for my mom. Yeah. Right. And, and, we, and we do focus on this. We focus on how hard it is for her parents more than we focus in on how hard it is for her. And then just in case you think that at least this movie knows who the villain is, we cut to the scene where Justin is pining for Courtney. Oh, this gave me some flashback. Do you remember high school drama? The drama of baby Eli going through notes and throwing away notes of a relationship that lasted one Week or less. <laughs> this burned. This burned real deep. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, I had. I had so many girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Flash cut to baby. He just Totes. carefully taking the photo out of the photo frame that you buy and putting it into his wallet. <laughs> Not a lot of way. You died okay. in 9-11. That, that was my song. Yeah. yeah sure Me was. and Joey Potter. So. <laughs> So, yeah, so we get this kind of montage of him sadly reading her notes and her sitting in that doorway <laughs> they used to sit in together it's, all by herself. Oh, my God. This montage is it's really long and funny and they don't realize it. It's so like we might as well watch a storm cloud form and then start raining on a pane of glass that they're in front of. It's so <laughs> yeah, slow. And then she's in the sad floor of the hallway with her sad little orange and her sandwich like there might as well be a shower and she's got her clothes on and she's having a cold shower but it's nuts in the doorway yeah yeah no and the piano that's playing here is as boring as the fucking plot well we get you know she sees him flirting with another girl now and so she flirts with another boy and oh but the most important thing we see is that he's reading the letters that she sent. And in the early letters, she would always close off by writing Psalm 28, 7. And then at some point she stopped doing that, presumably after the boob pics ruined her as a person. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I, I looked it up. Psalm 28, 7 is just a generic God sure is nifty. I, I like him a lot. Thing. <laughs> it's so That's boring. It. I trusted in God and it worked out great is what they're saying. That's that's the Bible verse about this plot. What the fuck? So weird how they can never come up with a good one that makes sense for their thing when they need it. So weird. God. I was really hoping it was like, and she uncovered herself before him and laid herself <laughs> yeah. across the street. Okay. That, you know well, what? That you is know what? Apropos. apropos. Okay. All good right. for so you. <laughs> still, still montage. This is still montage. So much longer later. It's so slow. Yep. I, I don't want to wait for this montage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. They may have teased us with a brutal assault, but clearly the stakes of this movie is this goddamn high school relationship. So I need a minute to process that. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. 
Will Courtney and Justin find a way to reconcile their relationship? Did Jody's boyfriend's sister see Lane making out with Nick from Eastwood High? Was Terry flirting with that skank from third period chemistry? Typical. Find out the answers to these questions, or at least questions exactly like them, when we return for the drivelous conclusion of Vindication, Episode 2. Hi, welcome to Typical Gym Experience. How can I trap you? Hi, trap. Okay. Uh, Yeah, so uh, I'm looking to get a little bit healthier in the new year, so I was thinking I'd hit the gym a little bit. Absolutely. Well, how about you sign up for just $84 a month and you can enter our maze of confusing machines and get ripped. Right, right. Um, I'm looking for something a little more guided and I just want to be healthy. That's Got it. Like, shredded. Shredded. Shred it. It's a lot of violence when you're talking about your own body. Look, if you want to get healthy with a workout that works for you, why don't you try FitBot? Oh, what's... FitBod. FitBot's innovative algorithm learns about your goals and training abilities and crafts a personalized training regimen that's unique to you. Wow, that sounds great, actually. It is. FitBot creates a program based on your unique goals, experiences, and equipment. Their algorithm uses data and analytics to build on your last workout and maximize results. Whether you exercise three days a week or twice a day, every workout is better than the last. FitBot even tricks your muscle recovery, balancing your workout plan with a variety of exercises to avoid overworking certain muscles. Wait, so I can tell the app what equipment I have and it'll build me a workout? Exactly. Okay, but that's going to be crazy expensive, right? FitBot is only $12.99 a month or $79.99 a year. But if you sign up right now, you'll get 25% off your membership. Kick the new year off right and get started with your customized fitness plan from FitBot. Get 25% off a membership when you sign up now at FitBot.me slash GAM. That's 25% off your membership at FitBot.me slash GAM. All right, well, thanks, I guess. You're going to destroy it. Right? Yep. Shred. Crunch. Explode. Uh, You know what? Just uh, say a nice word about physical fitness right now. Uh, Murder. Okay. (laughs) And so that's when your boyfriend sent the pictures around to his friends. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Have you seen those pictures, by the way? No. No, I haven't. Really? Because, um... I can see on your clipboard, there's an envelope that says cell phone pictures. Right. Yeah. That's, uh, that's just for evidence. I haven't looked at it. You, you haven't looked at the evidence? Uh, nope. I will. I will look at the evidence, but I'm, I'm going to cover them so I can't see your, your, your bits and bobs. So, I mean, wait, hold, sorry. Why, why did you need to print them out at all? They're literally child porn. I have a Blackberry, so I can't. Wait, so get them. So you've just been driving around interviewing people with an envelope of child porn of my daughter that you don't plan to look at. Yeah. Um. Did, did you say yes? I should probably go. I don't think you guys beat this guy up. But hey, uh, what's your name? If you start an OnlyFans, will you let me know? Should we? Okay, a- you sh- you need to leave. Um, okay, I'm going. I'm going. So carousels. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action action with uh, Courtney sulking in her room when dad comes in for a quick heart to heart. <laughs> Never should have let that boy play late night go fish with you. <laughs> yep. And this is where they try to put Christianity in, but it's insane. He's just like, hey, honey. So, huh, yeah, not really a, a Bible verse for dealing with revenge porn. <laughs> <laughs> but no, God has a plan. There's a verse about that. There's a lot of verses God about that. has a. Oh my God! Did did they have a contest for least useful advice you could possibly give a human being for that line? Ah, oh. evil advice. At yeah. this moment, right. I was like, okay, I need her to be like, oh, cool, thanks, Dad. So you're saying God has a plan that includes revenge porn on me, and then a better relationship with somebody else? Could he not? skip straight to the second one? Or? <laughs> All right. You're going to think this is crazy, but the cure for COVID depends on you getting revenge porn. <laughs> I don't know. He's got a whole web huh. up there. He's got string mm, and That is pins. mysterious. Okay. Yeah. His ways are pretty mysterious. No, but COVID, are we pro or anti? Yeah, right. right. Mm, we don't talk about it on this channel. Okay. Cut. Look at the, the Tubi version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. No, yeah, this is like literally on Pure Flix, you could not take a position on that. That's fucked up. But yeah, but this is actually where dad finds out that she sent her boyfriend nudes and that they made him out and made it out into the world because he picks up her phone. She's getting all these messages from creepy guys who are 
you know, I guess returning the favor with dick pics or something like some gross ass shit. But he sees all the harassment she's going through. And now he's ready to kick a little ass. And now Heath wants every character to get beat up almost to death. <laughs> a lot more characters need to get beat up. Yeah. A lot of just random people in the school. Yeah. Could we get characters from a good crime drama to come beat up this crime drama like <laughs> CSI Miami they all just show up and start getting yeah each one over. takes one person like like a they just superhero drag fight. the scriptwriter into the frame yeah beat him up. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you also yeah now Courtney's dad goes to see Justin at work and I want this to be the John Wick hammer in his basement moment right I, I want an <laughs> eye of the tiger to start playing as Justin walks over or something I, I was excited. I, I I don't often root for a grown man to beat up a child. No, but this is one of those instances. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, honestly, honestly, Vindication, if you had wanted to win me over, if he just beats the shit out of this kid and then we flash out of the scene and the cop's like, oh, OK, I guess huh. that's who did it. <laughs> there you go okay close this notebook i no longer need it -ba -da -ba vindication theme song <laughs> just the credits come up <laughs> yeah but so instead he stands in the middle of this crowded restaurant and yells if you are soon hospitalized for assault i will be the prime suspect <laughs> yeah. right he actually says it's it's a weird moment he basically says that but he says specifically I will beat the shit out of you if one more tear is shed by my daughter. It, that's a weird hedge on beating up the kid, right? It's the best, most pure flixy threat because it's like, I need you to get those pictures off the internet. And they're like, dude, that's not, that's how, not how you don't, you can't I just, do. you get those pictures. I don't care how you do it, but go time dimension no more. Right. I would have to take out the infrastructure for the modern world, basically, in order for that to oh, be. You it. lost me. Google the opposite of the pictures. <laughs> Fucking do it right now. I don't care what warnings Dr. Strain has to ignore from Wong. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler. <laughs> you get those pictures out of here. I don't know. I don't care what kind of plot holes arrive at the end of the movie. Yeah. But this, this happens in the middle of this restaurant, and, and we see Everybody in the restaurant watched this happen. And I wanted somebody to be like, sir, this is a cheesecake factory. Um, <laughs> and we support you. Yeah. And so we were kind of good luck somebody... beating the shit. Do you want to do it now? Because, I mean, I, I assume one more tear will be shed. So just do it now. It's a weird hedge you said earlier. Can you just do it? He never does his roll ups. We'll all watch. We'll help you. <laughs> <you. laughs> so, yeah. And, and we cut out of that to the, to the detective interrogating dad and going, you know, you noticed there were other people in that last scene, right? There was like people eating at the restaurant and other workers. And he's like, right. I did not mean to yell. I'll beat you half to death in your driveway. Kind of. So you know how that is. It was a, a turn of good phrase of turn of speech. Dad is doing legal voice like Andrew taught me to do. There are many jokes that I make at times <laughs> on our shows <laughs> of humor. No and reasonable laughter. person could Mary believe that, I, that I was going to beat up a child. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like the cops giving him like a pro tip, which made sense. It was just like, hey, man, you can you can just beat up a child without announcing it in public. Yeah, you just, <laughs> just, just go straight to it. Oh, all oh, right. Like, if I know a thing or two about getting away with crimes, it's me because I'm a cop. So <laughs> hear me out. Honestly, if cop guy had just been like, this is fucking cool, dude, dab it. And like, done a fist bump. Vindication's my favorite show. Right? <laughs> so, but then we cut to the, the high point of the movie. And of course, Heath's best worst. Courtney is now sitting in their doorway again. <laughs> and she's got 45 seconds to kill. And she almost slits her goddamn wrists from the pressure. Yep. <laughs> yep. Is it jelly up or jelly down? I don't know what to do. <laughs> it, it should be jelly up. She's looking at this sandwich like she's trying to sex it or something. She just lifts it up a little and then puts it back down and then lifts it up again and puts it back down. <laughs> you can see the actress go, okay, I'll give them another take of that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Surely the scene has begun by now, she said out loud. Yeah, no, 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 just keep rolling, keep rolling. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> straight in, straight in, straight in. Pick up, down. Got it? Did we get it? Did we get it? Cool. I wonder if the editor just hated her. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to use both times. <laughs> <laughs> and 
this is where boyfriend comes over and he's like, hey, you used to. And again, this this line really haunts me because keep in mind, she wrote Psalm 28, 7 at the bottom of all of her notes. Right. With the colon. Right. Like in, in, in normal Bible notation. Right. And he comes over and says, you used to write a name and some numbers <laughs> on your notes to me. <laughs> he thought Psalm was a name. Right. And like a code? Like, was he doing math for a second? Being oh, like, okay. It's going to be like an escape he, room. This will lead me to another clue where her boob pictures 28 are. divided <laughs> by seven. It is divisible. <laughs> That's four. So four. No, he looked it up. He's like, yeah, so I did, I did a bunch of code stuff. It didn't really go anywhere. I looked it up. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, it's from the Bible. So that's cool that it's, or Bible. It's a book. I, you know what? I really enjoyed the character named God. Yeah. I thought it was a cool, you know, you really fleshed out that character nicely in that book you were referencing. I almost made my best worst, the best worst. Who is this Jesus person? Anyway, is yeah, it exactly. Jesus or Jesus? <laughs> I don't, I can I never tell. <laughs> but the, the point though, is that he was really moved by Psalm 28, seven again. So here it is in its, in its entirety. This is the KJV version. Okay. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song, I praise him. That's just like, I sure like God. It is impossible to be convinced of anything by that series of words. Yeah. But he's like, that really changed my perspective. It's not even a particularly nice compliment for God. No. <laughs> Neither is this episode. Really? Yeah. 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 But the point is, though, is that he read Psalms 28, 7, and it changed his perspective. And he's a Christian now. And he's sorry for robbing her of her Christian innocence with the revenge porn. Right. right. But really, she's sorry because that's literally what happens next. Yep. She's yeah. like, well, I, I see what you I, it, I appreciate that. But it, this is my fault. I mean, this is on me. You know, I look, I'm a Christian and a woman. I'm kind of obligated to blame myself at this point. So, yeah, this never would have happened if I didn't really enjoy that candle moment. That That's yeah. on me. That's on me. She also mentions that she apologized to her dad for being the victim of a sex crime. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. He apologized to his dad as well for I don't even fucking know <laughs> yeah, at this yeah. point. He says, I apologized to my dad and told him I'm trying to change. And the dad, <laughs> the dad thought he was becoming a Republican. Yeah. So what did, did Pure Flix think that that was like going to win their test audience over? People Absolutely. Being like, oh, he's a liberal. This makes yes. sense now. Okay. Right. Yeah. Lib liberal revenge porn. Typical. My son someday, he's going to call me and he's going to apologize. For not being a Republican. Yeah, right. That is <laughs> yeah, maybe. what is going to happen. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, it's not that I'm going to get old and fragile and then impose my existence on him, even though I have terrible politics and ideas. That is not <laughs> no. what's going to happen. He's going to get down on his knees and find Trump. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, let's not, you know, hit this one with too light a touch. I feel like the moral at this point of the movie is, because they've already identified the revenge porn thing as abuse. Their word, right? He said, like, not all abuse is physical. So they know that they're talking about abuse. Their moral seems to be you owe it to your abuser to forgive them, take them back, and try to make them into a Christian. Yep, that's correct. Yeah. And I was, I, this, that happened. Yeah. And I'm watching this and I was like, there's only two minutes left or so. Is that's the moral of the story? They yeah. don't have time to change the moral nope. now. That's the fucking moral. And no, they don't. That's the moral of the story, pretty much. Yeah. The only way they could have backed out at this point is if this show had ended with not. <laughs> <laughs> but we flash out of this conversation. We realize that the dad has been telling the story of him coming and apologizing. And the cop's like, wait, wait, wait. Let me get this straight. Because the sex criminal who sex crimed your daughter came over and said, I'm sorry, I'm into Jesus now. You forgive him? And he's like, yes. Yep. Yeah. He's like, you know what? I also used to be a terrible, abusive, revenge porn kind of guy. And then I found Jesus. So I figure like I owed it to him. He's like, you don't. Yeah. You're also, you probably should have been punished for your crime. You all suck. Everyone sucks. <laughs> I, at this point, Snoke should have popped out of the corner of the screen and been like, gotcha, that's what you get for liking one of the characters in the movie. Right, yeah. 
Yeah, and this is when Courtney's dad says to the cop, he's like, yeah, no, I totally believe that he's a Christian now. You can't just make something like that up. Yeah. Um, exact words. I wrote in my notes, said a man who is literally reading lines that someone made up. Yeah. Do, do Christians think I'm Christian is too elaborate to be a lie? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Like, I'm like, I'm watching a fictional TV show. So someone just made that up. <laughs> or, or did this director have to like wait around until the actor playing Justin found Jesus? Right. They're like, no, you're never going to be able to fake that. You're going to have to, we're going to actually have to convince you of our religion. We're doing a boyhood thing here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is, this kid has real faith now. So really, moral of the story, uh, sorry about doing revenge porn with your daughter's pictures. Shibboleth. I'm cool now. Yep. That's, that's the, that's the, the story. Yes. But then, so the cop is like, and so I, I should tell you, we have video of your truck showing up at Justin's work on the night that he was assaulted. And he's like, yeah, I went to, I, I needed a blanket. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> this is a terrible alibi that happens to be true. He's like, oh yeah, I did show up right after threatening him to say I was going to beat him up, but I was actually there to congratulate him for being a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> but it's real. It's real. It's yeah. not no, a right. bad excuse. Exactly. It's real. Thanks to my whore daughter's behavior, he's a Christian now, yeah. and I wanted to say congratulations. That's really what happened here. I wanted to congratulate the guy who revenge porned my daughter, yes. But when he was there, he did notice. Now, keep in mind, this is the fucking... This is the Cheesecake Factory, right? This is just a restaurant. He says, but I did notice another man that was lingering there at the restaurant when I went there. <laughs> like, of course, the, he's waiting for his wife to bring the car around, you jackass. He mysteriously seemed to have brought his own cheesecake. To the che <laughs> no, that's a to-go box, man. Why would he have cheesecake? Also, I have to point this out. It's such a small moment, but it's just, it really tells you all you need to know about Pure Flix. The guy says, what did he look like? And, and they start describing him. Nobody ever points out that he's white and the cop never asks. No. Right? Because the movie just assumes that the natural state of people is white, unless you say otherwise. Also, he's describing the dad, but the idiots who made the, the dad of the kid who's shitty. Surprise. But the movie, the idiots who made this, this TV show, didn't have the sense to make dad easily describable. So they're like, he was shit. Sorry. He was at the beginning of the episode. Um, <laughs> you know, did he have a mustache? I feel like. Did he have hair? I don't, I Tall. Don't, uh, uh, hands. He had hands. He definitely had hands. Normal skin. <laughs> <laughs> I would say. He was guilty looking. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, but he actually says. Yeah, so I saw an, an assailant looking person by chance. I should have mentioned this earlier, police officer. <laughs> but yes, I saw an assailant looking guy. Uh, he had hands, uh, you, and, uh, he had a thing in his hands. He literally says he had something in his hands, yeah, and the cop's like, oh, no, that's no follow up question there. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm, that's good stuff. I'm going to write that down. Hands. <laughs> thing. Object. Would object describe the thing? Yeah, object so describe it. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I would describe it as an object. Yeah, okay, so. But yeah, as as Eli already said, this is going to turn out to be Justin's dad who beat him up for some unrelated thing that was a throwaway line way earlier. I'm so confused, though, because wasn't Justin found at his house? Yeah. So why is the dad there? Because because Courtney's dad says, well, you know, I got there. He'd already left. But I saw this other guy waiting for him. But he'd already left. Oh, I, I think they forgot what they said earlier. <laughs> they definitely forgot. They, they forgot that they didn't say. He, he got found in the Cheesecake Factory parking lot. Right, but, but like... Yeah, but that's what they're saying now. So are they saying that the dad was standing there after he beat him unconscious? Because because he'd already <laughs> left. Like, you would know his car. You saw his car. His car was sitting there like, when you ahem, ahem, I'm going to kill you to him. He was standing <laughs> by his car. I'm going... I beat up my son and I left him in this parking lot and I'm just going to get a real quick piece of cheesecake. There and and a vegan cup salad, and then I'm gonna head home. <laughs> well, but the, I was gonna say also the daughter saw it, right? We're gonna find out later because you remember the daughter wouldn't meet his eye earlier and clearly had guilty knowledge. She saw it. That ca it can't have happened at the parking lot. So he went to the cheesecake factory to look for his son, and he's not there. So he brooded a while so that everybody would see him, and then he went back to that. He knows where he lives. He owns where he lives. He does. I don't. Also, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just need to talk about why the dad beat the shit out of him because it's the dumbest twist. Yes, sure. And we did mention it earlier. They mentioned it earlier. We did not because it's so unimportant. 
he skipped baseball tryouts. Yep. So the dad beats him what we're supposed to assume is like within an inch of his life because he skipped baseball tryouts, making the rest of the episode entirely irrelevant. Right. Yep. That's what they did last time, too. That's their thing. You had a reason <laughs> for the dad to beat the shit out of his kid. It's because he's a sex criminal. Yeah. And he was like, look, <laughs> we've all passed around child porn to our friends as a revenge thing now and then, but you embarrassed me in front of Coach Steve. No. Get the fuck over here. The writing team is like, we need to we need to think of something worse than, you know, sex criminal. Um, <laughs> baseball tryout skipped it. Yes. It. There we go. That's a bad thing if we're going to rank them. It had absolutely nothing to do with any of the characters that we'd met no. up to that point, right? The, her whole film was like the, Detective Travis is the worst guy because he, he figures this out by going and saying to the daughter, Hey, you look like you knew some shit earlier. Do you know some <laughs> shit? And she's like, Yeah, man, I was just waiting for you to ask. <laughs> yeah, you could have avoided this entire episode and just asked me right away at that point. It was so obvious that I knew the answer. He's like, right, but then I wouldn't have had a reason to check out those naked pictures from the evidence. Do, so. do you have any naked pictures that I oh, might Jesus be related Christ. to a different thing? <laughs> oh, God. I'm just saying, maybe you jaywalked earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually get to watch the dad start to beat up the kid at one point. So he's in the parking lot of they forgot. I love that you use the word get. We get to watch. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wanted to. I, no, I wanted you're right. To you're right. No, I wanted to get shit out of him too. You're no fair. Fair. But, but dad comes up to him and he's got the, remember the object from before in his, um, arm ends. What was it? Hands? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a letter. <laughs> it's a letter. And we learn he like throws it at the kid and he's like, you didn't go to baseball trial. So it was a letter from the, coach that he didn't show up for the tryouts but he, from before when dad was talking about how he's a republican i thought maybe it was like a, a mail-in ballot for a democratic primary <laughs> <laughs> beat him up for not being a republican that would have made more sense to me i think the, i think the test audience would have liked that better yeah right no i also love that there was well yeah that i guess they didn't want to make him too sympathetic but i love that too that like the level of genericness they achieve in their dad's son yells Right. Yes. Like you don't love me enough. You never listen to me. You die. Uh, I. I'm grounded. You. I, that was you, that's you. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is that they very clearly because they describe this brutal beating and we're like, oh, are we gonna watch this? They did not choreograph anything close no. to that. <laughs> so we just watched these two actors have like kind of a slap fight. Right. Because there was obviously a first take where they had too intense a slap fight and someone got someone else's eye. And so they like <laughs> cried about it and apologized and everyone took the afternoon off. And then they came back and this is the like half ass take they did so as not to repeat, quote unquote, the incident. <laughs> <laughs> somebody had to dial a number back down to zero days right, yeah, exactly. since the last time somebody got poked in the eye during a slap fight. <laughs> So we could have hired Alec Baldwin for this one. Okay. <laughs> oh, makes no sense. Wow. Woof. He murdered a lady. All right. So so now we have we have Justin recovering and and Courtney has written him some letters, right? He's he, we see him all bandaged up. <laughs> His head's wrapped like he got beat up by a cartoon. Oh, and yes. Immediately bandages appeared seconds later. It almost has so the, it, it might as well have the big lump, you know? Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dad uh Gave me an exploding cigar. And, uh, <laughs> told me it was rabbit season. Sw swung my beak all the way around to the back of my head. It was horrible. It was they had a, I got to stop buying from Acme. Surgically reattach it. And when I looked down, the cliff that I'd been standing on was gone. <laughs> when I was apprised about the loss of gravity, I fell. <laughs> Why did I look? <laughs> and of course, she closes her letter by saying that she's super happy that he loves Jesus. She is, quote, his sister in Christ. That sounds like you're never going to fuck. And then we close on Psalm 28, 7. Yeah. <sighs> okay, just real quick to recap. The only specifically confirmed Republican character in the thing couldn't even beat up his own child for the correct reason. <laughs> Instead of revenge porn, the reason was a goddamn baseball tryout. Republicans ruin everything. Right? They yeah. can't do anything right. Learn to beat up a kid for the right reason. All right. God. <laughs> so I, I feel like I, I overestimated this movie several times in my notes going, oh, wow, is the moral this? But like I kept assuming that the moral would have something to do with, you know, 
her nude pictures or some other element we had introduced sure. to the plot, but they, they, they were literally unrelated to the story. So my question to you to close is, what is the moral of the story? Like the best I can come up with is don't get too caught up in your girlfriend's nude pictures to play baseball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we don't know what the word twist means as it yeah. applies to a script. Share your nudes with your abusive dad. <laughs> okay, how about what? maybe it's better to share the good news than the good nudes. Oh, That's there we so go. That, yeah. We have a tagline to it. Anyway. Netflix, you can have that one. <laughs> so, no, you can't. You can't have that one. So let, me, <laughs> let me be super clear. Everything's copyrighted on this. We have a little <laughs> copyright notice at the end and everything. TM. Anyway, well, that's going to do it for our review of Vindication episode too that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to sucker ourselves into doing this again so eli tell us what's on deck we'll be watching grace of god if i may read the description would you please having lost his faith years ago detective broadly <laughs> is called in sorry. to investigate <laughs> sorry broadly broadly yeah i wonder how he's written is called in to <laughs> investigate the disappearance of the local church's collection plate which happens all the time. Mm -hmm. As he questions its various church members, rumors swirl. When one unexpected churchgoer confesses to stealing the funds, the confession resurrects Broadly's views on God and helps him see <laughs> that through faith and belief, <laughs> there really is rebirth and redemption. Oh, God. Well, so is this some kind of detective tacular we've got going there or something? Okay. Woo! So, I guess with that to let's say look forward to we're going to bring episode 333 to a merciful close once again a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go if you'd like to count yourself among their ranks you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode you can also help a ton by leaving a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms and if you enjoyed this show be sure to check out our sibling shows the skating ADS citation data D&D minus and the skeptic card available wherever podcasts live and if you have questions comments or cinematic suggestions you can email godawful at gmail.com legal services for this podcast are provided by the offices of P. Andrew Torres Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick, the Bivol Traffs on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder, earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. The moral of the story was very confusing for all the Little League dads out there. Right? <laughs> and they're like, fuck, you can go to jail for that? <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Justin went on to still be an asshole and they broke up again because duh. <laughs> Courtney's dad really probably should have kicked that kid's ass though. Yeah, really, it would be hilarious if they showed up like the one dad shows up and he's like, oh, are you, can I get seconds? You leave him, leave him breathing. So oh, I can... you, you got to him first. <laughs> okay. Hey, my reason's more important. So I'm so sorry to interrupt. <laughs> The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.